Okay. Much like we learned in the beginning of calculus, there are rules for finding these partial derivatives. And you may already have some exposure to partial derivatives um, from either physics or differential equations, if you've already taken that. Um, it's not very difficult, but I have to treat the course as if you are truly the rookie. So I hope that this is rather simple for you as we progress. So how does this function of x and y, uh, how does its partial derivative with respect to x turn into 3x squared plus 4xy? And look, you can watch many, many, many people who have their own uh, video channels. There's textbooks. There's so many ways of looking at it. So I'm just going to put my personal spin on it. Um, especially if you're in my classroom, it's good to know um, how I'm going to talk about it when we do get a chance to meet live. So think of, uh, well, this is telling you what your variable is. You know, so that means x is the variable. So the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. And the derivative of 2x squared is 4x. It also, this direction, also means that y is a constant. And the derivative of a constant is 0. So you don't see this last term here. Technically, there is a a plus zero that happens at the end of this statement. So you have 3x squared plus 4xy is your derivative with respect to x. That doesn't fully resolve the variable y here. I'm going to come to that not immediately though. We're just going to focus as the beginning of our rule is you treat this as your variable and you treat anything else as a constant. So in this case, when we take the derivative with respect to y, y is the variable. And that means for a constant, that would have to be x. So when we look here, the derivative of x cubed doesn't show up here because the derivative of the constant is 0. The derivative of 5y squared is 10y. And the derivative of y is 1. So there is a 1 here. We're just too efficient. We're lazy to write it down. Again, I'm not fully resolving what's happening with this term in this segment right now just given us sort of the ground rules for how to treat these um, functions of more than one variable. So let's do some simple examples based on this information. Okay. So if f of xy equals 8x plus the square root of y and you are asked to find the partial derivative with respect to x. You treat x as the variable and you treat uh, y as a constant. So the derivative of 8x, well that's right, that's just 8. And the derivative of a constant is 0, so I won't even write it down. I left a space here because I want to remind you that there is an alternative notation for partial derivative that we are going to use more frequently. Um, we don't get to use the prime notation, but you will get tired of writing this, and the more I use this notation, the more these start to look like the number 2. So that's just not going to cut it for me. Um, 
So I'll frequently just use the subscript notation, which really doesn't have an alternative when we're in this course. So there you go, partial derivative is 8. If we're looking at the partial derivative with respect to y, well then this is 0 because that's a constant. Derivative of a constant is 0, I should say. And the derivative of the square root of y is 1 half multiplied by y to the negative 1 half power or 1 over 2 square root of y. Okay? Let's see another one. Ooh, three variables. Functions can come in more than two variables. Secant of x plus e to the y power plus natural log of z. So pick a variable. Okay, I'll choose z. The partial derivative with respect to z is going to be, well, that means z is the variable, but the others are constant. x and y are constants, and the derivative of a constant is 0, so all I have is the derivative of natural log of z is 1 over z. Please note, I did officially get lazy with my notation here. I didn't write the full function notation out. In a pinch, this doesn't bother me too much, but you should know that it will bother some and you are responsible for the as formal notation as your instructor asks for. So be ready for it. X, Y, Z. Uh, let's see here. Partial with respect to X. These would become zero because those are constants. And the derivative of the secant of X is secant of X tangent of X and the partial with respect to y well now these would become zero and we just need to calculate the derivative of e to the y which is e to the y power because y would be the variable for these types of functions you might start to build some confidence I just want to caution you don't be overly confident yet it may not be always as simple to keep your separation of variable and constant just crystal clear like those two. All right, let me show you another variation. These are going to involve uh, simple chain rules. They're sometimes called the chain rule of the derivative. And if I take the partial of f with respect to x, well, the way the derivative of the natural log function works is it's 1 over the function multiplied by the derivative of the interior fun function if x is truly the variable, the derivative of this, what would that be? Well, that's correct. It would be 4 because y is a constant and the derivative constant is 0. So we would likely just go straight to here once we've got some experience. This does not reduce. You're finished here. It cannot be reduced. All right. You can already see my Next little example. Um, shall I do it? I'll write this down for those that want to see the alternate partial derivative without the full and complete explanation because it so nearly matches this. 
Okay, for this one though, I want to just point out a couple of things. Oh yeah, this is another name for f of x, y. So I could now find the partial derivative with respect to x or the partial derivative with respect to y. So I will do both. The base function has a really nice derivative, but then I must multiply by the derivative of this function that's on the interior, in this composition it would be called. So if x is the variable, what is the derivative of x squared plus y? Well, that's right, it's 2x. And you could just about bet that if you were to look at a solution manual or some software it probably would be written like this at the end. This doesn't bother me but this is more typical for how it would be written. Last but not least in this particular case derivative of e to the power is e to the power what is the derivative of this expression if y is my variable? Well, that's right. It would just be multiplied by 1. So this is all you would see if you were trying to take its partial derivative. You know, I kind of made it sound like we we're almost done, but can we do one more? Let's do one more. Remember, you have a pause button. You can rewind, use it, take advantage of it. Now we're only going to choose one of the variables uh, just because there's so much similarity here, but I want to walk you through just again uh, the concept of the chain rule. Before we take a derivative, let me rewrite this as 8x plus y cubed to the 1 fourth power and now we're going to find the partial derivative of the function with respect to... Yeah, I was kind of leaning towards y also. Let's see. So you begin and you're kind of on first year calculus autopilot. Power rule 1 fourth quantity 8x plus y to the third power subtract 1 from exponent, negative 3 fourths power times, okay now I gotta wake up this right here means that y is the variable x is constant so derivative of 8x is 0 because it's a constant derivative of y cubed is 3y squared and then we'll just resolve this by writing 3y squared divided by 4 quantity 8x plus y cubed to the 3 fourths power in the denominator. Or you can write it with a root back on it if you want. Okay, we've got some basics done. Before doing anything else, especially my videos, if you have a textbook of some kind, find problems like these in practice. Check solutions. Next thing I'm going to do is get a little bit closer into determining which is the variable and which is the constant. So, stay tuned.